Hello, everybody. I hope that uh, all of you are continuing to do well, and hopefully nobody's gotten sick or anything like that. Um, I know that this uh, whole time period has taken a lot longer than what we had hoped for, um, but we have to keep soldiering on. And so uh, the video for today is going to be over our uh, next lesson, which is over molecules and compounds. Um, so basically where we left off when we were uh, back in school was we had talked about atoms and we had talked a little bit about uh, the electrons around the outside of the atoms. And then the most recent uh, lesson that we did was about those valence electrons. And uh, those are the ones on the outside of the uh, atom. Uh, and they're the ones that we said like to join up with uh, other atoms. And so that's where we're going to kind of pick up from uh, today. Uh, so today you've got uh, your notes, which I'm going to go over here with you, that are going to be uh, on classroom for you to uh, go over as well. Use those for your assignment. Don't randomly guess. Make sure that you try on those, okay, and use it to help you. Um, so the first thing on here it says uh, is any time two atoms join together, they make a molecule. Okay, so let's start there. So we have here um, what represents uh, water, okay? So any time we're going to have, uh, take a part here, you have the red ball that's going to represent um, oxygen, okay, which you can see down lower in the notes. And then you have, it says white represents hydrogen, which is what it is in the picture. Um, however, uh, my kit does not have white, so we're using yellow, okay? So the yellow is going to represent uh, hydrogen here. So basically what this says is any, two, any time two atoms join together, they make a molecule. Now, the second part on there says when atoms of different types of elements join together, they make molecules called compounds, which is what water is. If I took and I join two um, or more atoms together, they're going to join, this little spring here is going to represent the joining um, through something called a bond, okay, which we'll talk a little bit more about in just a few minutes. But that joining together is going to kind of look like this, okay? So you've got that bond in between them. That bond is where they're going to be sharing those uh, electrons on the outer side. So if you remember, hydrogen has one electron on its outer shell, and carbon has four. So carbon is basically um, looking to join up. I'm sorry, I said carbon. I meant oxygen. Oxygen has six, and um, so oxygen is looking to find two more at, um, atoms to, or two more electrons to try and make its outer shell full, okay? So that's the whole point is that this oxygen here, which has six, wants to have eight, okay? So what it does is it looks for something that it can join up with. So it could join up with something like helium that would have two already, or it can find two ones, which are two hydrogens. And so what it does is it bonds up with one of them, and then it bonds or joins up with the other, okay? So that's what you have of water here, the um, or H2O. So the O is the red, the one oxygen, and then you've got your two yellows, which are the H's. So H2O, okay? So this is basically molecularly um, what the compound of water would look like, Oops, excuse me, would look like, okay? Um, we can also show, uh, in the next part there, it says molecules are not only made up of different types of atoms, but also different ratios. So here I have one oxygen to two hydrogens. Another possibility, the second one on our list there, is um, with uh, carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide is this one here. And carbon dioxide is basically uh, one carbon and two oxygens, okay? So carbon is represented by the black here. Oxygens are represented by the whites, okay? So if you remember, we just went over that these oxygens, they have six on the outer shell, so they're looking to join up with two, okay? Well, 
carbon, if you look at it here, has four electrons already in it, which means it has one, two, three, four spaces that are kind of open. Okay, so it's looking to either share four or take four. Okay, so what it does in the uh, example of carbon dioxide is it forms something that will be a little bit later down later on down the road, forms something called a double bond. Whereas here, with water, we had a single bond. Okay, because there's just one spring here, one bond in between each. Now with carbon dioxide, we have what is called a double bond. And so a double bond basically just shows here that it's bonded in two separate ways with that same atom. Okay. Um, kind of even maybe a little bit tighter bond there. Okay. So that is a double bond. So you have single bonds like with water, just one spring and you have double bonds, carbon dioxide. Okay. Both of these are compounds, water, H2O, carbon dioxide, CO2. Okay, so one carbon to two oxygens, both of those with different ratios. Then I'm going to skip over ammonia and we can go to the really big ones uh, like sugar or glucose, which when you look at it, I actually need to take apart one of my other ones here because I ran out of reds. And... Okay, so for sugar, um, we need six carbons. So that's six of the black ones. So I start off with one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so six black ones there. You see them all. All right, and then I need, uh, we're going to skip over the hydrogen for just a minute. I need six oxygens. Okay, so six red ones. One, two, three, four, five, and then the other one's over here, six. See them all? All right, and so then I need 12 hydrogens. So starting up here at the top, let's just make sure I got them all. I may be missing one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, I was missing one because I was short one on the other one. All right, so. So that is my 12 hydrogens and my um, six carbons and six oxygens. Whoops. <laughs> my atom's falling apart. All right. So this here basically much more complex, you can see, than um, our other atoms that we looked at earlier, um, but still very much um, a compound. Okay. So this is what's called kind of a complex compound. Okay, uh, C6H12O6, one of the wonderful things of sugar. Okay, now when you look at sugar um, actually on a molecular level, it will actually look kind of like this. Um, let me kind of make that a little bit bigger. Well, maybe. That's not going to let me. You can make it bigger when you look at it. But basically, this right here, this rotating, is um, molecularly what uh, sugar, 3D sugar, uh, would look like. You know, so it's basically this just tightly packed together. Okay. Um, and when we look at molecular, or when we look at the molecular level of sugar, um, it tells you that C6H12O6, like I just went over, uh, means six carbons, uh, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. Okay, so that's how many of each of those atoms uh, exist. Okay. Um, next, uh, it says it takes, oops, it takes these specific atoms and these specific numbers to make up a sugar molecule. All right, so in other words, if I were to take off um, some of these, if I were to lose a hydrogen or lose a carbon or uh, lose two oxygens, whatever, then it's not going to be sugar anymore. Okay, it has to be put together in exactly the right way and the exact right amount in order to be sugar. Okay, um, molecules and compounds are held together by forces called chemical bonds, which we already went over. Okay, so that's what these little springs here represent. Okay, it's basically kind of the atoms holding on to each other um, with those electrons. Okay, by sharing those electrons. Um, 
And when atom shells aren't full, they'll try to bond with other, other atoms to get the right amount of electrons to fill the shells. Okay. Again, we've already went over that, just kind of a reminder. Okay. So you're always trying to get in complete outer shell there. All right. So then the last thing um, for today is how those bonds kind of work. You have two things that can happen. It can either be called a covalent bond or an ionic bond. Okay. Um, so for example, with chlorine, I don't really have one like that. Um, with chlorine, which you can see here in the picture, this is a covalent bond of chlorine. And chlorine has um, seven electrons in its outer shell, so seven valence electrons. And so what that means is it's missing just one electron there. So it could bond with something that has one, which is what tends to happen down here. We'll talk about that in a minute. Or it can bond with somebody else that's missing one. OK, um, kind of like what you saw with that double bond here, that type of thing can form between um, two of the same element usually, uh, but it can form between those to make a, uh, a bond, OK, to, to kind of share those two. And um, when they share, um, you can see here this when they're without that electron, they got the sad face. Um, once they share that electron, um, Basically, this chlorine is using this one. This chlorine is using this one. So they're sharing those. Um, nobody's giving it up or anything like that. It's just they're they're sharing them. Um, then it's a happy bond. Okay. So a covalent bond is where they share electrons like that. Then down here you've got the ionic bond. Uh, the ionic bond is with again chlorine. This time, since it's missing the one, it bonds with something that has only one. Okay. Uh, one of its favorites, sodium, Na. Um, sodium chloride, otherwise known as table salt, extremely abundant on the, on the uh, earth, um, is, like I said, one of those bonds that happens very uh, easily or, or is very popular bond. Um, so here it's kind of an unhappy thing here because sodium has that one electron it wants to give away and chlorine has that one spot that it needs to gain. Um, and so when that happens, when one actually gives away. In other words, sodium's not getting anything from chlorine. Um, it's kind of giving its uh, electron. Um, when that happens, uh, you get what's called an ionic bond, which is what's happening here. Sodium gives away its electron. Chlorine gains its electron. Um, and uh, it forms the compound of sodium chloride or uh, table salt. Now, when this happens, you see here where it has this little plus next to Na, has this little negative next to Cl, you actually get into something called positive and negative charges on them. We're not going to get into that that far. You will get into it when you get into high school with chemistry. So just kind of understand that's what's happening here. That's what that plus and that minus are or is. Um, but like I said, we're not going to get into that right now. Right now, we just kind of need to know the difference between the two. Okay. So again, covalent bonds is if they're each going to get something out of it. Um, ionic bonds is where only one of the two gets something out of it. Okay. All right. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing for you. Um, going back, um, included with your assignment today, uh, you also have, since we don't have, uh, the books that we need for these, um, what I've done is I've included a, uh, kind of a printout of what the book information we would need would be. Um, and so the first page is all about uh, today's stuff, which is molecules and compounds. And then the second page is all about valence electrons, which was Thursday's assignment um, from last week, which by the way, a lot of you still need to do. Um, and, uh, and then some just interesting facts down at the bottom of that. So that's also included. Uh, and then last but not least, you also have your assignment. And so the molecules and compounds exit ticket is your assignment. Uh, I think there are 10 questions. Yes, 10 questions on there, multiple choice. Uh, so not that difficult. Remember the way that you answer these is you simply highlight like that, go up here, highlight, and pick that answer, which by the way, I'm not saying that's the right answer. Um, and yes, guys, these are two different words here. Iconic, ionic, they are two different words. So make sure you pick the right one. Okay. Um, I think that that is 
it for that. Um, don't forget that our uh, Zoom meetings have changed. Uh, the one for Tuesday will be at 11 o'clock, 11 a.m., and the one for Thursday will be at 8.30, I believe it is, uh, p.m., uh, and the one on Thursday, Miss Mills will be hosting, and the one on Tuesday, I will be hosting. And uh, you're welcome to come. I'm going to go over basically the same type of material during that. Um, but if you kind of want to have a little more interaction, you're more than welcome to come over there or to come on there. Um, and then uh, also if you have any questions uh, about today's assignment, past assignments, whatever. Um, make sure, guys, you're double-checking SIS. Uh, anything from this quarter that can, you know, help you get that grade up, um, from third quarter, you need to finish, okay, um, to get those, those grades. All right. Um, I think that's all I've got for you today. Um, again, please reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, email is the best and, um, I will see you later. See ya.